You gotta know that you're sick first, man. Listen, you can't get saved if you don't acknowledge that you, you need to turn away from the sin inside your life. It's entangling you. You can't be, you can't find salvation in Jesus Christ if you're not sick of being the sick you. You know what I mean? If you're not sick of being the person that continues to get you in trouble, the person that continues to destroy things, the, the person who thinks so negative, the person who, the, who who's in bondage, the person that's perverted, if you're not sick of being the sick you, then you will never get set free. Ever. Jesus said, I did not come for the healthy, but I came for the sick. Jesus came into this world of what? To bring sinners into repentance. That means that you must, yeah, that you, to be set free from the sin in your life, to be set free from the addiction in your life, to be set free from the racism in your life, to be set free from the sorcery, the witchcraft, every uh, bondage of uh, darkness inside your life, you must be set free from that. And the only thing that can set you free is first admitting that you're sick. If you will only admit that you're sick and say, God, I have a problem, I'm sick. I'm in a sinful state. I need you. I do not want to be this sinful man. I do not want to stay with this sinful way of thinking. I need you, Jesus. I didn't come for the healthy. I came for those who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. I didn't come for the healthy. I came for those who said, I don't want to be stuck in this sinful way of living. I don't want to be, for, for the rest of my life, continually uh, being a murderer in my heart, a murderer physically, whatever it is. I don't want to be a perverted person. I don't want to be a destructive person. I don't want to be a greedy person. I don't want to be a lying person. Set me free from these sins, Lord. That's like me telling you that a doctor saying, hey, you got cancer, man. And here goes the prescription. I don't have cancer. Nah, I'm not sick, man. What do I need to take that medicine for? You first got to admit that you're sick, y'all. You could be in church all day, but if you don't think you're sick, if you don't know, if you don't say, yeah, there's no sin in my life, I'm not, I'm not that bad, then you'll never be set free from the things that are holding you down, man. Does that make sense? I don't want to be that person, Lord. I don't want to look at and look and covet something that's not mine, God. I don't want to spend my life trying to chase things and chase people that you never that, that you never put in my life. I don't want to try to chase somebody else's heart if I'm not chasing yours, God. I'm sick, Lord. I'm a sinner, Father God, I'm dirty, I need cleansing. There it goes, right there. Someone who knows they're sick, someone who goes to the hospital and tells the doctor, yes, I'm sick, give me the prescription. What do I need to do? That's you, coming to Jesus, the doctor, the greatest doctor of all, and saying, Dr. Jesus, I'm sick. I need your salvation, I need your cleansing. What do I need to do? And then when he gives you your prescription, right? That means you turn away from the sin. If the doctor says, hey, look, you have a problem with, with, uh, with overeating, you have a problem with high blood pressure, you eat the wrong things, I need you to stop. I need you to stop. I need you to start working on your health. Start walking. Start drinking water. St watch what you eat. If you're going to want to live another year, another month, you're going to have to watch what you eat. Someone who has wisdom will say, you're right, doctor. You're right. I'm going to go ahead and start working on that. And then they start working on it. Diets, healthy exercises, and then they get to see and live longer, right? But someone who comes and Jesus says, look, you're sinful. You have this addiction. You have this, this greed. You have this evil inside of you. And I need you to turn away from the things that are, that are making you evil. I need you to cut off some relationships that are evil. I need you to cut off some bad habits that are evil. If you're going to want to see and be brought back to fellowship. If you want to be brought back to fellowship. Because that's what salvation is about. It's not about you going to heaven. It's about heaven going into you. It's not about. That's not what it's about. Some, so many people's motives are wrong when they say. Uh, I want to get saved because I want to go to heaven. No, 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 no. I want to be saved so I can have fellowship with the father and the son. I want to be saved so I, I'm not separated from the one who created me. That's what it's about. That is salvation and freedom in Christ. Not you going to a place of heaven and you don't even know the one who created it. You just want to go to heaven. I don't want to burn a flame. Let me go to heaven. But you don't even want to make time to, to spend time with the one who made it. You don't even want to spend time with the one who created these beautiful things for you. Who is this one who created this per this beautiful place of rest for me? Who is this person that, that, that sent his only begotten son to die for me in my place? Who is this love of this love of God? I need to know who God is for myself. Doctor. I want to know who you are. What must I do to be saved? Huh? And then you put that into application. Hashtag that, application. You just can't learn about it and don't do it. You have to do it. Like, it's like somebody, look, I'm in my car, right? 
They say, brother Brian, I gave you a brand new car, right? Boom, here goes the keys to the car, right? I'm like, oh, thank you, man. I got me a brand new car. But if I never put these keys in the ignition, if I never put the keys in the ignition and turn it on, then I'll never get to drive. I never get to go from point A to point B. I'll never get to experience what a car is. It's the same thing with your, with your relationship with God. God, you've given me life. You're giving me life. And not only that, you're giving me keys to be successful in life, to face opposition with confidence. Lord, show me. Show me how to drive, God. You take the wish. Show me what to do. You tell me to go left, I go left. You tell me to go right, but put the keys in the ignition. Oh, the Great Commission. Come on, man. Show me, Lord. Show me when to stop. Show me when to go. Show me, help me stay on the narrow road because wide is the road that leads to destruction and hell and everybody's on it. But narrow is the road and very few find it. Narrow is the road that leads to life. God's righteousness. You're sick. Just admit you're sick right now. Some of you haven't admit that you have a problem with lying. You have a, a problem with these things. Just be honest and say, God, I'm dirty. Cleanse me, Jesus. I know about you, but I don't think I know you. I don't think I know you like I should. Because if I did, why do I keep going against you? I'm sick. Give me the prescription I need. And I'm going to apply this to my life. If you tell me quit watching this, I'll quit watching this so I can get stronger. Why am I going to feed my mind things that are going against you? Why am I going to listen to music that is going against you and preaches the wrong message? I, I don't want to be a part of that. I make a covenant with my ears and my eyes today, God, that this body I offer as a living and a holy sacrifice to follow you, King Jesus. To follow you, King Jesus. There's ways of fighting that you could teach me, God. Show me your weapons of righteousness, God. I come from the street life, God. I'm used to fighting with my fist, God. Show me how to love and forgive, God. Show me the ministry of forgiveness and reconciliation, Father God. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to have fellowship with the one who created me. Let me pray for you real fast. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you, Lord. And I speak peace, life, love, and blessings upon every ear that's listening. Those who are out there that don't know you like in the way that they should know you. Those who do know you, Father God, and drift away from you at times. Lord, we're sinners, Father God, and you've called to call sinners into repentance, God. We ask you that you cleanse us today with the blood of Jesus, Father God. Cleanse us, Father God. Set us free from the evil way of thinking. Set us free from every root of sin that tries to hold us and entangle us in bondage of darkness. Align the things of heaven with our mind, God, that we would think the things you want us to think and speak the things you want us to speak. I thank you for salvation, Jesus. I thank you for dying and taking my place, my punishment that I deserve, but you took it. To bring us back into fellowship with you and the Father. I love you, King Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in my life and fill each and every one of us with the fullness of the full measure of your spirit. Of every fruit of patience, hope, love, joy, fresh oil. Patience, Father God, that we must wait whenever it's time to wait. Trust and obey in the process, God. We forgive our enemies, God. Help us to forgive those who offend us, those who use us, those who uh, smirk or, or laugh at us for living for you, those who, who try to uh, point their fingers at to see wrong in us, God. We forgive them, God, and we wish blessings and peace and joy upon their hearts and their families. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, I ask all these things, Lord. Finish the good work. Amen. I love you guys, man. Hashtag, I'm a sinner. I need cleansing. Jesus is the answer. Amen. I love you guys. Salute.